And I also would like to share, just because Ecuador was on my mind, I learned two things just this week about Ecuador. There are eight active volcanoes in Ecuador, and also Panama has are not made in Panama, they're made in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I hope I haven't stolen the essence of their talk, <laughs> but I doubt it. So anyway, <laughs> here's the thing So what's going on on the screen right now is a movie that we made of our trip to the Galapagos Islands. But the... But we're not going to cover the Galapagos today because that's on all the travel logs that you see. What isn't on, the, on all the travel logs is all, the, all that we learned about Ecuador itself. So we're showing the Galapagos before and after so you can see the animals and things that we saw. But we want to talk about Ecuador because this is a sages group. We're going to learn things. We spent three weeks we felt like we really covered the country. Mm, should be going. There. So where is Ecuador in the world? It's right here. It's on the equator, as you can imagine. What surprised me is that it's the Eastern Standard Time. I always think of South America as being below North America, but it's not. It's way over. The size of Ecuador compared to the U.S. is small compared to the U.S., but it's big for some states. This is purple next. Should I use it? No, I'll use my hand. Okay. So these are the regions of Ecuador. The eastern side is uh, leading, it's the Amazon Basin area right here. The Sierras, the mountain range is the Andes and the coastal plain, and then there's the Galapagos. Our trip started in Quito, and we made a big loop. Here's where we went. We went from Guayaquil to the Galapagos Islands, which is 300 miles off the coast. This is the main seaport of, of Ecuador. Then after our cruise in the Galapagos, we went back up this way. So we really got an overview of the country itself. And right here is where the active volcano is exploding, and right here is where we stayed. Oh. So it was really close. And it exploded last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not while we were there. But all the time we were there, we saw a few, you know, plumes. For, uh, from the distance. We never steam. saw any ash. No, we saw steam. We didn't see ash. Okay. So right down here is the this is a coastal plain. Oh. This is a coastal plain. Is Colombia to the north? Uh, Peru is to the north. Is that wrong? No, Peru is to the south. Colombia. Yes. So we're in, we started in the highlands, in the Andes. So you're going to see a lot of curvy roads. It's high mountain highlands like Quito's at 9,000 feet. You'll notice, though, that the agriculture crops and pasture land goes clear to the top, just about every tillable inch. These are banana trees. Did you know that bananas grow up, not down? That's one of their major exports. Another major export which surprised us was roses. So we saw a lot of greenhouses. Roses. Roses. Who would think? But you, here you can see they're farming for timber. Can you see? Can everybody see this? <coughs> or should we turn out? And a lot of it's, m most of it's done with manual labor of some sort. Here's another example of the agriculture going clear to the top. Do we need some lights off? I think it's <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so it may be high mountains, but and that's one of the volcanoes, but they do the best they can to farm it. What do they grow on the north slope? 
wait, I want to talk about this. This is a tree tomato. It's actual trees that grows a fruit that they call a tomato. It's quite different from our tomato. It's got more of a rind than a skin. And the seeds are about the size of apple seeds. This is one cut open. Oh, my gosh. But they're everywhere. Yellow inside like that? Yep, that's just an actual like that. one. What do they taste like? Uh, kind of tomato tangy tomato. Mm, okay. Animals okay. all over the place. In the middle of the road. In the middle of the road. There's the chicken, about to be run over. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was standing in the road. And the, the whole presentation is an hour and six minutes long, and it's on a movie, so we can't pause it. So I <laughs> apologize for that. People didn't seem to worry about theft. They grazed their animals, their ducks, their chickens, just anywhere. Mm -hmm. They have the right of way, too, probably. Yes, yeah. they did. And the animals didn't seem to worry about the traffic, and herders herded their animals. Just It was part of life. Pigs. Mama. This country has it all. Because they've got such a range, biodiversity range, from high mountain to coastal lowlands, they can grow everything. That's a vicuña. We'll be talking more about them. Their, their fur is extremely expensive. They're a protected species now. Vicuña. I'm so sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. This church was built um, just, just about at the time America was discovered. And it's got really thick walls. Really thick walls because there was no heating, no insulation. And it was also protection from something, people. <laughs> Wild vacunas. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, they got much more sophisticated as time went on. Well, and the Europeans moved in with their conquistadors, and, and we had the European mm -hmm. influence. Here we see more European-style church. And I don't remember, this might be one of the churches where this is all gilded gold here. So Ecuador's history starts in pre-Columbian times, and then it goes through the Incan conquest and the conquistadors, and we get a blend. So pre-Columbian to current. This is more general architecture. Some of all things. That's somebody's house. Thatched roof. But it looks pretty sturdy. Note the wiring. <laughs> <laughs> is the thing with the boom dome the church? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Do you feel safe traveling around by yourself? Very, Very safe. safe. This was this country was not based on warfare, it was based on trade. The people were quiet, shy, friendly. There, we never felt con confronted at all. And a as we go through these, you'll see a lot of houses like this and a lot of dilapidated buildings that are worn that you would see down in Mexico. But while we didn't feel this safe down in Mexico, here we felt entirely safe, even at nighttime. Do they have oil there? Yes, they do in the Amazon region. And for oh. that reason, <laughs> gas was $1.45 a gallon. Oh. And this was just last summer. <laughs> and, no, I'll talk about later. $1.45. Oh. They're on the U.S. dollar. Oh. This, we had, this is a municipal building. We have some show and tells up here for afterwards. <coughs> Do you know how old the building is? This one? This one, I don't no, know. I don't. See any religious influence other than Catholic? Um, well, Incan. And a whole lot of flagstone in the in the corridors, in the streets, or cobblestones. So we'll be seeing a whole lot of um, e even the streets paved with pavers and bricks. See, it's pretty clean. It's quiet. People just going about their business. Dogs snoozing in the park. <laughs> Bus transportation is huge down there. Like here again, an old cobblestone street. Mm -hmm. It looks in good repair, though. Yeah. 
Yeah. It is. The, the whole country was worn, but in good repair. These are little stones laid in. And in the next picture, look how over the years the tops worn off the stones. Mm. Labor intensive, you might say. Mm -hmm. And these are different colors of marble. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Mm. But clearly very old. Okay, districts. They had coffee, jeans, printing, separate districts for different trades. Uh, for example, they had a, a boot and shoe district. And as a matter of fact, the different indigenous communities specialized in different things. So we'd go to one town and everybody would be selling leather goods. And we'd go to the next town and everybody would be selling carved things out of wood. And this is the jeans town here. Yeah. Mm. You want to buy your skinny jeans? Come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just their brand or do they have like Levi's or stuff? Um, I don't know. My my guess, and it is just a guess, that a lot of these are knockoffs. Well, you know, they might. Big shoppers, though, you, so. We're not big shoppers, but huge stores, um, and it, it was. It's a fairly inexpensive country to live in. Uh, flower district. We'll see a picture up here at the top. The Pope can had canonized someone, and you can buy flowers to go in and lay at the altar or whatever it is for this for this woman. This shop is selling uh, fibers for knitting and crocheting and embroidery. We saw a lot of that going on throughout the country. Oh. Indigenous dress. Every community has their own style of dress. If you're in the know, you can see somebody walking down the street and know where they're from. Did you have to speak quite a bit of Spanish to get along? We speak Spanish, so it, we, that worked out. We just did. I don't know if they speak English or not. Here's, here's the... Oh, yeah, here's the woman. Here's another picture. But here again, the inlaid cobblestones. They also speak indigenous languages, and Quechua is the largest the group, but we didn't learn how to speak Quechua. <laughs> Um, typical jobs. Next set of slides are different types of jobs. These jobs are the ones that you would find here or anywhere else. For example, road construction. By hand. By hand, yeah. Almost everything is by hand. There was some machinery. Surveyor. And look at the building, size of the building. He's got a good view. Yeah. <laughs> Garbage man. But there again, it's a, a manual garbage man like we used to have. <coughs> we saw a lot of stuff that was bought used in the United States and taken down there. Most of the currency, currency we saw was worn Sacagawea dollars. Those are coins? Uh huh. Yeah, the, the dollar coins oh, you get here. There you go. Look at it. Oh, yeah. Specifically, look at the, how his oh, ladders oh, joined. Lord. <laughs> That's called an extension ladder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now small business operations. Like Cynthia does photo restoration. I, I'm now doing video. That's worked out. Uh, here's where we bought our wedding ring. You can't see, but you can see afterwards. Um, so a whole lot of little shops that um, This is a woman that running the cement mixer in her native dress. <coughs> The women worked right alongside of the men. And the children. Did and the too. children, yeah. Were so the women equal to the men? As, as far as... As opposed to being second class citizens? As far as we could tell, yes. Everybody worked, though. Everybody. Yeah. And they worked all the time, like walking down the road, knitting. Oh, and, no. And I'm not sure. This looks like a telescope there. The guy painting. Mm. Beautiful colors, though, in the, yeah. in the area. When were you there? June. Just last summer. Uh, what did you say? Plasterer. 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 <laughs> Guy that makes dog houses and sheds and everything else. Oh, my goodness. Matters? Probably. Road work? Yeah. And actually, I just noticed this is a slab of marble. Look at these pretty 
costumes. Oh, yes. And oh, scale. yes, that's another small business. For, 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 it's a small business. For a quarter, you can go out to the town plaza and weigh yourself. Because oh. the houses are very small. First communion dress. Mm -hmm. Need a pallet? This guy makes them. Person right there. Building restoration. But quite different than you would see uh, someone climbing a scaffolding and here. And I'm sorry we didn't get a picture, but we sh sure saw a lot of small shops this size for coffins. For coffins? Coffins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Everywhere. <laughs> Coffin shops. Tile. There was a lot of use of tile and one hotel coming up specifically. Okay, so everyone works. Um, all the people that we're going to see now, it's going to go through fairly quickly. Um, Ecuador says that they have only 4% unemployment. And it's because all of these people that we're going to see are considered as employed. The street musician. They're working. They're, yeah. Yeah, selling juice on the street. Selling ribbons. Mm. Pens. And we would consider them unemployed here. Yes. yes. But they're not begging. We didn't see a lot of begging. They're working. Uh, here it's Wi-Fi. You hear about Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. In Spanish countries it's called Wi-Fi because the I has an E sound. Mm -hmm. So they talk about Wi-Fi sites. Want a snack? Mm. We did eat at some street vendors. You didn't get sick. We didn't get no. sick. This guy's at least mechanized. That's cool. Yeah. This is a hardware store. When we travel we love to go to hardware stores. Oh. They're fascinating. <laughs> they are. Sure. This guy's doing artwork on the street. Shoe shine. Small investment, and you've got your own business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you go, you just go up there, they shine your shoes, and usually it's about 50 cents. This is outside a church where you can buy candles and uh, rosaries and things to go inside with. The problem with something like this is you'd have an inventory problem unless you deflate them every day. Here's another another, another, another small, scale. Small business. We were we were I jokingly said, hey, you want to see how much you weigh? <laughs> Look at the size of some of the eggs. Wow. Wow. Are they chicken eggs or other eggs? I th I think they must be goose. Well, yeah, it was everything from quail egg up to goose eggs. Okay. Street musicians. Ooh. Peruvian pipes. But they use that kind of pipe in in the this region. This, these are uh, jewelry. Little kid up here going shopping with or go, take going. Take your daughter to work day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, street vendors. There were a whole lot of people that would approach your car when you're in the street and you don't have to be afraid because it's like everyone does it and it's it's 99.99 percent .99 safe selling newspapers or fruit we actually bought fruit that way yeah so they reach into your car no we reached out <laughs> we reached out a, a bag of oranges a little bigger than this is a dollar so it's really inexpensive that's what she's doing she's bagging it up I don't know what that is. This is what we were buying was tangerines. And you don't always know what they're selling. I yeah. don't <laughs> even see what can't see what that is. But they're everywhere. And they're just right out in That's traffic. It's just commerce. That's just how it works. That's how they have such low unemployment. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, I really applaud the country for allowing people to work like that here. The government tends to make it difficult to be yeah. self-employed. Yeah, you probably have to have a license. Yeah. Now there were, oh, okay, here's a lottery person. You can, anyone can buy a lottery ticket and anyone can win the lottery, but you have to be a citizen to collect your winnings. Oh. Uh, here's a woman, even the handicapped are working, her daughter's helping her. The lottery is big there though. 
Yeah, roadside place. stands abound. You can get even ice cream at a roadside stand. Oh. But the man, the fruit was wonderful. Yes. Out of the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Flowers. Oh, it's fruit. It looked, it did kind of look like that. And here you can get a, a little cup of tomatoes for probably about a dollar. See this lady's working? Mm -hmm. Regional I garb love, over I there. Love their outfit. All of the different regions have their own hat. Everybody wears hats. But even in the business districts, you'll see people with wheelbarrows full of fruit or little bagels or whatever it is they're selling. That was an interesting combination, the high heel boots with yes. the uh -huh. uh -huh. jacket. It's like, hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting mix. You would see modern, actually there's an, a picture coming up. Uh, you can see very modern and very old school um, in the same side by side. They're walking a little girl. Huge melon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of, the bags on the front on your tables. Um, popcorn is a natural, um, or is one of the crops. So help yourself to the bags of popcorn on the table. We go to Mexican food restaurants and expect chips and salsa. You go to a restaurant here and you get popcorn. The, the I think this was one of the, the this was like an the embassy mayor or something yeah. like that. But cops are all over the place, which is a good thing. It's part of their unemployment. Uh, we saw very few cop cars but a lot of cops on motorcycles and even more cops on feet, on foot. Mm -hmm. Usually two at a time. That's one of the reasons we felt so safe though. What's going to happen when you've got security all around you? Mm -hmm. And I felt like I could trust the cops there. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the feel of the country as a whole. One thing that was strange though, they had checkpoints at many places, they didn't collect anything. They just asked to see your driver's license, I guess, to make sure you were driving legally, you weren't intoxicated, I'm not sure. Some of it was toll roads. Yeah. Please. Uh-huh. The U.S. driver's license was okay? Um, I don't know. We, we, did, we, had a uh, we, we had a friend down there that took us around. That here, even behind the scenes, you can see the cops waiting. You can use our money down there, then, right? Yes. yes. In the spring of 2000, they underwent dollarization because their economy was so bad. They they swapped over to the U.S. dollar. But what you get, they use Sacagawea dollar coins, and then they mint their own other coins that are the same size and shape and denomination as our coins. Now, you'll see a lot of people carrying things on their back. Um, many of these next photos are kind of blurry because you're in Ecuador, you're supposed to ask permission of every time you take a picture of someone. Well, that would have become cumbersome. Um, so I just got my phone and went like that and about a fourth of them came out. Moving car. Moving, yeah, from a moving car. Mm -hmm. But in all these cases, all these shots, you can see the hat, the scarf. Mm -hmm. You can also see most of them are carrying something. Here you can see something on her head. But they're carrying stuff or going to work or coming home from work. A lot of boots. A yeah. lot, yeah, rubber a lot of boots. rubber boots. Well, that altitude gets pretty cold. Then. Yes. But this. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this is down low or not. It goes all the way from the ocean all the way up to 14,000 feet, just in that little, that little country. Look at that burden. But and you know, if feet are the transportation you've got, that's what you use, right? 
and there's one picture coming up. I'll point out the burden that the guy's carrying is insane. Soccer team jersey. And here again, yeah, you just wait on the side of the road and the bus would stop and... Yeah, yeah right here. Look at this burden. And you just wait on the side of the road and the bus will be by eventually. Here's David Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. It looked like him, though. Yeah. <coughs> I just think it's wonderful that they wear their native garb mm -hmm. instead of denying their culture. Pretty skirt. woman carrying her pick and shovel. You know, some places you go you see disagreements and arguments and fisticuffs. Well, we never saw anything like that here. Istanbul, on the other hand, we saw <laughs> a knife fight in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. Could you speak a little bit louder? I'm sorry. Aren't they nice? Mm -hmm. Regional. Well, if walking so much, you probably need a hat to keep your... Yeah. Especially if you're in the highlands. Pants and skirt. Mm -hmm. Here's a woman who didn't like her picture taken. Mm. There, oh, yeah, this is the old and the new. <laughs> yeah. That's old and new also. Yeah. <laughs> and this, I wish it didn't cut off. Her braid went all the way down below her behind. Wow. Aren't they pretty people, though? Yes, they are. A lot of graffiti, but it's not bad graffiti the way you would see it here. It's most More graffiti. Artistic. Most graffiti there is art. I love the colors. Mm -hmm. Aren't they nice? Beautiful. And that I just had to include. That was just cute. <laughs> 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 he didn't purchase it. It wasn't like it was I, I made <laughs> Cynthia try it on, but it didn't <laughs> fit. <laughs> Here's the, one of the few beggars that we saw. I like the red skirts. Mm hmm. And the That's trim. Popular. That's a nun. And we, we saw several nuns just walking down the street. Sorry, said joke. There were two nuns walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you. Oh. That's me. <laughs> Actually, I didn't shave today because during vacation I don't shave. <laughs> oh, I just noticed she's crocheting right there out of her bag. Milk pail? This well, it's, it's on the equator. We, we spent it on this vacation. Oh, let, let me interrupt here. Here's someone making a Panama hat. And the reason they're called Panama hats is they were, they were made in Ecuador, but uh, I think FDR wore them when they opened the Panama Canal. Yeah. So we saw this and we thought, oh my God, what's happening? But this was the Santa Claus at the end of the parade. Roundabout. 
belts are oh, common yeah. all over the world, but they're not really used a lot in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Big high Big highway roundabouts have directionals to each city. Saves tra having traffic lights. Uh, oh, it Good does, point. absolutely. They, uh, they were all almost all decorated, though. Isn't this beautiful art? Some kind of art. Corn is the, one of their major crops, so this one had corn in the center. But you can see it's two or three lanes around the roundabout. Mm -hmm. Another hummingbird with fruit. Mm -hmm. The hummingbird, the one hummingbird we saw was the size of a thrush. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was huge. Mm -hmm. Was that a volcano in the background of that last slide? Probably. Part of our trip was through the avenue, the avenue of the volcanoes. Small roundabouts just have that sign. Mm -hmm. Slaying a dragon. Yeah. Wow. Who did that? Don't know. They, they had, some of the statues were kind of hokey. Others were really sophisticated. But art, we saw a huge amount of art there. Now, here they are carving balsa wood, which is one of the things they do. We, we got as far as the headwaters of the Amazon, and we saw the, the wood carvers of balsa wood there. We had over 5,000 photos, and we didn't think you'd want to see them all, <laughs> so we had to cut some things out. Rio Bamba was where we went, so we went around. Everything goes counterclockwise. We went around and off to Rio Bamba. Rio Bamba is where the uh, volcano is currently erupting. How long was your trip? Three total weeks total about three weeks, including the Galapagos. What's that? The fountain in a roundabout. Pretty. So hotels, we stayed in some really nice hotels. Uh, mostly local hotels, but a couple were really nice. This is, what's her name? The hacienda where Simon Bolivar met his mistress. No, the important one. Oh, we stayed in the room that Meg Ryan stayed in. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they had peacocks on the grounds. It was a really lovely hacienda. This was the foyer to our room. Oh. And we stayed in a couple very odd hotels. Here's, go ahead. Look at the size of this room key. And this I wanted to include. This looks like just kind of a cloth draped over a thing. This is a drawing or a painting. Hey, look at the detail, and then I'll angle so you can actually see that it's two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. Mm. Mm. Oh. Wow. We, st we stayed in this hotel for about two or three nights, and we would walk down the same step until the last day. I didn't realize that was just a painting. Oh, that was wonderful. Now I mentioned that one had tile everywhere, absolutely everywhere. But here, look at this. This is neat. This is their door closer. A rock with a string. <laughs> <laughs> we like to say we got high for Robert's birthday. Uh. This hotel was at 13,000 feet. And this is the one that was at the base of the, the val pretty much the base of the volcano. We had a thermal vent into the room. This was our jacuzzi, our hot tub. Mm. And we kept it full because it was so cold. There was no heater in the room. We had a fireplace. But the tile was absolutely everywhere. And it's so artistic, don't you think? Very abstract. I don't know. I utilize every inch of material. Yeah. Using what they had. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, pretty. You don't have to worry about putting art on the walls. No. But it was everywhere. Even the, between the beds, but that was yeah. tiled. Mm 
So you would go back again, but you're not moving over there as well. Correct. Yeah. Right. Like your cleaning kind of thing. What's that little table made of? That's a slice of log. Here's a better shot of the, the thermal vent um, jacuzzi. There was just a pipe. It only had hot water. Did I mention everywhere? There was tile everywhere. <coughs> Very cleanable. Even the fireplace. I'll do that myself. Much. And there were outside uh, hot tubs too. More tile. <laughs> now, were they just used by visitors or did the... It was a hotel. All the people we saw were visitors like us. I yeah. don't know what... We, we, we usually travel out of season because we don't like the crowds. Mm -hmm. And there were, it wasn't packed when we were there. I only saw about three cars. Mm -hmm. Tile up the stairs. It was a pretty place. How about accessibility? Not. Some, ho <laughs> some, some hotels rented by the hour, if you know oh. what I mean. <laughs> the Palacio del Mor. Okay. So is, um, would that mean then that prostitution is uh, legal and regulated or? Um, don't know. Honest, I don't know. <laughs> if you live in a house with a lot of people, you may need an hour of privacy. Yes. Good point. Anywhere there's a Cupid or a heart, it's it's one of these hotels. And they were all over the place, and, and we didn't notice it right at first. And at one of our hotels, we got a folkloric performance, so I'll get the sound up on this one set. one mine. Okay. This is a longer concert and he sliced some things together so you'll see them swapping um, in <coughs> there. Total concert was about an hour. I have it down to about two and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah, especially near the end of the night. Tired, huh? Yeah, I didn't want to be there. You know us, we don't do evening things. This thing started at 8 o'clock. But it was right outside our hotel room, so I thought, well, why not? <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> But he has the timing down. Watch his hand when the music stops. A little maraca kind of thing. <laughs> Okay, here's where we saw the wild vicuña, and they're protected now, but a coat made of vicuña hair, um, or a scarf it was, mm -hmm. used to be, what, $15,000, some, something, something ridiculous. The hair is so fine, you can weave it really tight together, and it's actually waterproof. Mm -hmm. This is the volcano, constantly smoke coming out of it. Mm -hmm. 
But as Sue said, there are a lot of volcanoes. There's the Vicuña. Isn't that beautiful? Oh. Oh, there he is. Lama. They sure look looks like, like it, it might. Yeah. But this hair in in the in the movies, the hair was just moving because it was so the wind, the slight wind was moving it. This is way up at the top of the Andes. Oh look, Isn't that beautiful. Beautiful. Then we visited on the way down from the volcano. We went to a town called Mindo, and they had a butterfly sanctuary. And they were actually studying them, so it wasn't just for looks. They were studying and conserving and promoting butterflies. But this is a, this is a what's it called? Not chrysalis. a chrysalis. What were the orange things that we saw? Those are the in the prior slide. Mm. Oh, just flowers and such. Those are just little Caterpillar. caterpillars. Mm -hmm. And they take them through the entire stage. Here you can see one's already spun its cocoon. And then what they'll do is, okay, here are more, I don't know if it's caterpillars or cocoons or chrysalis. But they'll harvest the chrys chrysalis and they'll move them to a protected area so that they can watch them and they watch like them jewelry. hatch. Those are all cocoons. Some of them sparkled like that. Looks like metal. Yeah, like earrings. And then yeah. we saw a and couple hatch right there. Oh. What are those bright pink things? I think those are the push pins. Oh. But look at that. Those are all cocoons. Mm -hmm. Ooh, pretty. And they weren't afraid, so you could get up close and just take pictures. They were raised with people. Yeah. <coughs> was this just an open area, or was it? It's, it's, enclosed. it's enclosed, I would say, about twice as big as our sanctuary total. It was up in the uh, rainforest, though. You can see all the wet. They're indigenous. Some of those are indigenous to this country. I think they all were. And they smashed plantains. They like uh, eating uh, squashed old banana. Some of them look more like moths, don't they? Yeah. Interesting. This one. That's a butterfly on me. Oh. That doesn't look like a butterfly in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Not the big blue one, no. Yeah. I thought it was Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> oh, Bill. Oh. That was supposed to be my line. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jane Mansfield. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my. Looks like a head of something I could see. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting and we also went to an orchid farm where they raised orchids from around the world and um, raised them, studied them. And the young man that was working there took us around through the farm and he had a little magnifying glass and he explained some of the, the very different details of each or orchid. He was very, very knowledgeable. I don't remember it, but he was good. He spoke English? Yes, very good English. What are their main exports? Um, hats. <laughs> hats. Mostly um, fruits and vegetables. Bananas. Coffee. Coffee. Gas. I don't know if they... I don't know. So you had to look at that through a magnifying glass. But they even make rice because down in Lowland they have this marshes. They grow coffee. I thought this picture was interesting. Oh, yeah. Very nice. That's frameable. Yeah. Oh my 
vegetation in the land looks very beautiful, really. It is. The, the, the lots and lots there, of rainfall. It's much cleaner than I thought it would be. Yeah. It was very clean, and there were very few places that I would call ugly. And because of the high rainfall and the mountainous terrain, there, there is also an avenue of the Cascades. We went through more than 60 waterfalls. There's the good line. Yeah. There are a, a whole lot of restaurants in Ecuador ranging from really fine dining where your food portion is this big down to uh, street places. But all of them, most of them were um, were safe to eat at. How were the prices? Everything was was a little less expensive than Phoenix. It depends on where you went though. We had some we knew some people who went out to dinner and spent fifty dollars each and we went around the corner and spent five dollars each. Right? No, five dollars <laughs> for the both of us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the exchange rate? Like you have to use their money, right? No, it, they they're dollar? entirely US dollar. Oh cool. That's a big restaurant. Yeah. We didn't go there. No. So is it that they have fine reputations? Is that why the difference is so spreadable? The what? Or made the fine dining to the other street? Oh, it's it, a reputation. No, it's just just like you can go to the compass room up there or Los Compadres. So it'd be like no, well, your rants are going to a steakhouse. Yeah. Pizzeria. There's Polly's Pizza. Um, we have a picture coming up of something. Oh, yes. Yes, we. I ate one thing that was very unique, and we got a movie of it. Okay. They, I heard that they eat guinea pig, but we never found it on a menu, so we didn't get to try it. But our friend got a call from another tour guide that the person they were leading wanted to find a guinea pig restaurant because that's one of the national dishes there. Fried guinea pig. That's, that's your fries rotisserie chicken that you buy on your way home? Uh huh. I noticed that the people look clean. You don't, I don't see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Actually, even the beggar that we saw was clean. Right. Sushi restaurant. Uh -huh. Okay, now this next segment, I think it's here. Oh, no. Popcorn. Oh, we, okay, the popcorn. Um, like Cynthia said, you, uh, here you get chips, there you get popcorn. And it's like this, and it's usually served with some version of aji which is tree tomato and pepper and vinegar, and that's about it. And if you order soup, they expect you to put popcorn in your soup. Yes, okay. which we tried and it wasn't bad. Okay, here, what they've done is they took a blowtorch and they crisped the outside of this hog skin. And then what they do is she gets her knife and she cuts it off into pieces and then peels the pieces off strips off the fat and then puts it in the bowl and that's and they serve it with salt and that's what you eat you have this piece of fried bacon skin sprinkled with salt and you eat it like potato chips yeah about like chicharrones no it was it was crispier it was uh, almost like pork rinds blowtorch and that's by the side of the road yeah. And it was three dollars for a bowl about that size. Plus side dishes. Yeah, plus a couple side dishes. There is one place though that you don't want to eat, and those are the dreaded the chifa. Chifas have guaranteed the lowest price that you'll ever pay anywhere for a restaurant, but they have the reputation of substituting anything they can find for the meat. Dog, cat, rat, guinea pig, horse, cow, lamb. And they are everywhere. 
And they aren't just in Ecuador. We saw them in uh, Peru, too. Yeah. So but they're, they're people all of, them of that land, do they generally eat there, typically? The people they must, there? or yeah. there wouldn't be so many chickens. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Do they but have clean ratings? I mean, is it, is it, or is it not, I don't know. Our, 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 we went, we were told not to go to a yeah. chifa. And our, our tour guide, we asked him, and he said, oh, no, no, we're, I'm not going to take you to a chifa. Mm -hmm. Because some of them are perfectly fine, right. but the others, you don't know. But chifa means it's cheap. Okay. So, no, we didn't eat there. The United States presence is felt everywhere. You know, you have a whole lot of imports and things like that from the United States. Who knew the Pocatelli was used in other cultures besides our Native Americans? Mm -hmm. uh, Domino's Pizza. This is just in one city. This is just in the capital city of Quito. Direct TV. <laughs> Uh-huh. Pizza Hut. Do some people speak English? Um, most. most. Mostly younger people. And then... Handyman. Handyman. Yeah. Chicken Broaster. The delivery vehicles are scooters. And small. Yeah, they, the, tra the traffic um, curves. The traffic was fairly congested. I read somewhere that Mickey Mouse is mo more, um, no universally more universally known, yeah. th known than Jesus. <laughs> we actually ate here at Chicky Park. Paintball. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And my nephew is um, is into paintball, and he said that um, is it Brazil Sounds right. has has the world paintball championship team. Paintball. See, the paint may be peeling, but it's not really dirty. No. Costo. <laughs> so they're monopolizing on the logo, but they don't have to pay the royalty fee. Buffalo chicken. And chicken wings there are called alitas. Alitos. And here again, a, a comma instead of a period, but this is $4.90, $9.99. So for medium pizza, it's not bad. A, lo a lot of payless shoes. Huh. Father's Day on sale. No parking they take seriously with all the cops there. Uh, if you park in a no embarque place, they will tow you or ticket you. Oh, this did say Ritz crackers that it cut off. That's, that's fresh meat. Okay. Rock and roll, even in the graffiti. Mm. McDonald's, of oh, course. Of course. It's everywhere. Yeah. You're saying there was no McDonald's now. <laughs> Karaoke. And that's a the receipt that's all in US dollars. Okay, we did go to one place where the chachila, whatever you say it, healing ceremony. The chachila you can tell by his dress and you'll get a better view of his hairstyle. Way back in history when the Europeans arrived, they brought smallpox. 
and the, the Tachila Indians were dying. They prayed and they prayed and they, they were led to an Achiote bush. They took the Achiote, they crushed the seeds, and they covered themselves in the red juice, and it cured their illnesses. So now, in tribute, they make their hairstyle that looks like an Achiote seed, and it's coated with the, the juice. And you'll see his head is red. That's the seed. So, now, what they have here, they took ter termite dirt to rub it on to control mosquitoes and flies. Sorry about the trickiness. But he's showing a close up of what we've been putting on our skin. <laughs> They're termites. <laughs> because, he, well, it was after he, we put it on our skin, he showed us what it what actually was. Now we're going to go into this little room and they're going to perform healing ceremonies on us. Cynthia's was a general well-being and mine I have trouble with my Achilles tendon so he specifically focused on my ankle. And this was again about an hour long. I've reduced it down just a little bit. Oh, now they painted their both of our faces. He made us honorary Chasila um, members of the family. See the red streaks on my face. Did you have to pay for this? Yes. Well, our guy did. What's the plant? Don't know. Mystical. Do those gloves have fluid in them? They are, are they well? Well, some they look like it. I didn't. Did it make your perspective feel enhanced for a period of time or anything? Uh, Not so much. Not so much. I'm just kind of curious how it worked. Yeah. It was just yeah. It was Their belief system based. Yeah, it was it was interesting in, interesting to just oh, take so part in I that. Um, yeah. And with your ankle, did you notice any change, or not so much? Well, you'll see them putting leaves on my ankle, and he had me wear it for 24 hours. Right. Um, that was and uncomfortable. it was uncomfortable, but. Um, I would say, if, if anything, I noticed a little difference. So be similar to taking an ibuprofen and the small going down? Probably. So bad. Yeah, the leaves themselves probably have kind of an anti-inflammatory. Because you'll see, he'll take the leaf and he'll put it over the flame to release the juices and then put it on my skin. Uh huh. Everything must be symbolic of something mm -hmm. in their ritual. Sym symbolic, and there's probably some truth in what they're doing here. Tribal truth. Let's help their people. He got the big guns. I had, I had the uh, assistant. Robert got the big guns. So th this is a warm rock. Probably, actually.
That's okay. Yes, I know. I needed a lot of work. How about if you set up a shop like this here and it'd have a lot of people? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he massaged for about 10 or 15 minutes. I bet that felt good. It did. <laughs> It did. But since he put the leaves over the flame, I think it released oils. Mm -hmm. So I had to wear Cynthia's sock all night long. Wasn't a personal commentary, I'm hoping. <laughs> now don't miss this next part. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you did remarkably well sitting still. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to do, we have just a few more pictures. People are people everywhere you go. So, as we watch these next couple pictures, they'll prepare the potluck and. Uh, when we wave goodbye, it's time to eat. <laughs> and then after that, during the food, if you want to look at the lapidus, it will be fine. Yeah, I, it was long enough just focusing on Ecuador. What I did is our traveling companions, I had them send me their 100 best photographs of the Galapagos trip. So that's what I'll be putting on here to play while we eat.
Pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and their their medical is um, since this is so U.S. friendly, a lot of doctors retire there, so their hospitals are staffed with retired United States physicians. So the medical care there is is wonderful. Costa Rica as well. Yes. Robert, while this is going, you want to talk about your? Oh, okay. They were kind of people. Yeah. So this is my regular cane. I wanted to buy one from Ecuador, and this was the longest cane in the rack. And you can see that they're probably on the average about eight inches shorter than uh, citizens. American. American. Well, they are American. Yeah. And the show and tells we have up here, we, um, Cynthia's father was into weaving. So we have a, this is a weaving of a local artist of all things Galapagos. And other little trinkets. Two, three days. Maybe two days at the start, one day at the end. Little, little town of... Cities aren't our favorite thing. Yeah. Little town of Cuenca was about 100,000, and that was a nice size city. Little swimming pool. This is down in the coastal lowlands where it was actually hot. Because you're on the equator. What's the population approximately? Of? Of Ecuador. Ecuador? Yeah. Quito is the second largest city and it's half the size of Phoenix. Or Phoenix is half the size of it. I'm sorry. We're saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Thank you.